Hey everyone, a couple of weeks ago, Microsoft released a new free version of its Copilot offering called Copilot Chat. With multiple Copilots now available, it's understandable if you're feeling a bit confused. But don't worry, because in this video, I will demystify Copilot Chat for you. My name is Samuel Boulanger, and if you enjoy content like this, please like and subscribe. Now, let's dive in. Copilot Chat is available to all users under a Microsoft 365 commercial or educational license, uh, which require no additional fees beyond the existing subscription. That means that if you're using a personal license, you won't have access to the same Copilot Chat experience. You'll lose uh, the enterprise data protection uh, as part of it. It's accessible from different places. Uh, first one is from the web. So if you navigate to copilot.microsoft.com, you'll be presented with this page and basically you'll have to choose the work option here and not the personal one, obviously, if you want to have access to all the feature we'll cover in this video. So I'll just click on work and I am in uh, Copilot, Microsoft Copilot chat. One way of knowing if you're in Copilot chat is this green shield to the top that is telling you that you have enterprise data protection activated for your Copilot tenant. It's also available from different places. It will be from the sidebar air in Edge, will be available from the Copilot inside of Microsoft Team or uh, Microsoft Outlook as well, but it's need to be deployed by your admin in that case. Uh, it will also be available in, on iOS and Android if you have the application installed on your different devices. Again, you won't see it in the productivity app like Teams or Outlook if your admin didn't add pin the services in the relevant app. And it's all available again for free for everyone that has a Nentra license. Now I talked a bit about the enterprise data protection, but what does that mean exactly? If you click on enterprise data protection here, it will open the web page with all the description of what this involves for you and for your organization. But in a nutshell, it means that the data your user generate will be repurposed to train an AI model and will fully remain isolated from public use. Uh, data is protected both in transit and at rest to strong encryption protocol. All the interaction with Copilot chat uh, are logged and retained for audit purposes as well, uh, which will support uh, help support compliance, e-discovery, and other regulatory requirements. Uh, all of this can be accessed through the Purview Compliance Portal through purview.microsoft.com if you want to look at uh, the logged and the, the audit files uh, from your Copilot environment. That being said, let's go back to Copilot here. And the first functionality of Copilot, other than obviously the enterprise data production, is that it's web grounded. So if you heard about the M365 Copilot paid license, it's graph grounded, meaning that it can have access to your organizational data, which means email, Teams transcript, any exchange that you have and that reside basically inside of Microsoft Graph. Now, with the free license, you won't have access to this. You will have access to web grounded chat, which means that Copilot will use either his own knowledge to provide an answer or will search the web to do so. An example, if I'm asking Copilot a question like, you are a market research assistant for Contoso Technology, a company developing the Mark 8 project. Please provide an analysis of the latest market trends high performance quadcopter, including emerging design trends, competitor, et cetera, okay? So it's basically, I'm asking to do market research based on a product for the company Contoso Technology. And what it does right now, is it's searching the web and based on what it found, it will craft this answer. So if I scroll up a bit and I'm looking at the answer and I'm overing my mouse, you will see those basically citations that are telling me where the information come from. So if I want to open that source specifically, I can always click on it. And here you can see that this website, FactMR, about Quag Corpter Market. It's all the same for the other citations. Here it's a different source. It's all available at the bottom as well. So I can always see from which sources Copalachad pulled the information to be able to craft this answer for me. 
A second thing you can do is file analysis. Now, again, if you're familiar with paid M365 Copilot license, uh, you can reference multiple files at once. With the free version, is limited to one, but uh, you can basically upload any kind of documentation like Word, Excel, or PowerPoint and ask question about your file and it will be fully protected, okay? So it won't be go anywhere else than in your own tenant won't be used to train the, the, the model as well. So as an example, I can use this marketing data structure Excel file for the Mark 8 project I just used in the latest example. And I can ask a question like, I have uploaded a file which contains customer survey responses and marketing campaign performance metric, analyze the data, provide insight on customer preference, trends, most effective marketing channel for promoting the Mark 8 quadcopter and summarize any key takeaway, suggest data-driven recommendation to optimize future campaign. Now you can see that it behave a bit differently in the sense that now it's reading through the file. It's not looking for uh, on the web, it's looking through the file and extracting any information that might be relevant. And it's using its own knowledge to craft this recommendation. So if I scroll up, you'll see that based on this file, I have an age distribution between 18 and 25 and 55 and 65. Uh, the ge geographical distribution is North America and Asia, followed by Europe and South America, the different marketing channel, the customer feedback from this file, and then it will give me some recommendation. Okay. It can be used as a starting point to build to build a marketing a marketing campaign or a marketing plan. And it's always a way from not starting from blank. Obviously, you'll have to play a bit with it, but it's a great, really great starting point. Now, another thing that is available with Copilot Chat is what we call pages. Pages is a loop component. If you didn't hear about loop, I don't want to talk too much about loop today. It's not the purpose of this video, but I'll describe it like a one note on steroid, really built for collaboration. So pages are one of the component of the loop product. It's included with Copilot Chat. So meaning that you can basically take the answer that came out of Copilot and it did it in page. It will copy the whole answer inside of pages like this one, okay? But now I can continue asking question on the same subject or a new subject if I want and add it to my page and start building my marketing plan. If I need to collaborate as well, I mentioned it, page is in loop in general is very, is really a collaborative tool. So what I can do is I can click on share page link and I can share this link with any of my colleague and now they'll be able to start collaborating with me on this page. And then we can work together on building this marketing plan. If I'm asking a follow-up questions, for instance, based on the insight from the Mark 8 file, create a structure marketing report, draft on our SharePoint page, include the following section, an executive summary, customer preference, marketing channel, etc., etc. Now, if I click send, it will build obviously what I just requested, but I will be able to copy paste it in this file. Again, it can be done collaboratively, meaning that one of my colleagues can work in the same kind of interface, asking questions to Copilot and collaborate to this document. Now let's see the answer. I have my executive summary, customer preferences, best performing, whoops, best performing marketing channels. And now I can simply click in edit pages and it will copy paste it for me here. Obviously I can modify any part of it if I want. I can add any component to it. If I want to add a table, a checklist, bulleted list, a uh, call out, I can add code, math equation, etc. So it's, I won't go to all the details about pages. I might do another video in the future just to, to show you that basically you can edit this page, work with your colleague and build this marketing plan like in my example. Another thing you can do is generate images. So it will basically use the DALI model from OpenAI to generate an image. And I can ask a question like, generate an AI powered promotional image for the Mark 8 quadcopter. And I will define what the image should look like. So I want uh, to showcase a sleek futuristic drone flying over a scenic landscape. And then if I send it, 
It will basically leverage Microsoft Designer, which is running on DAL E, to generate the image for me. And once it's done, I'll be able to copy paste it on my page again directly from the Copilot interface. There we go. So I think, honestly, it's pretty neat. So I will, I can open it, I can download it, and I can click on Add to Page. So if I click on Add to Page, we'll add it at the bottom of my collaborative page here. Keep in mind that you can always go back to page either by selecting pages on the left side here. Okay, so I'll be able to see all my pages I created. But as well, if I'm clicking on Copilot chat, and if you look at the right here where it says recent chat, that's, this is the history of all your chat. I can always navigate from one chat to the other. And then from there, I'll be able to click on edit page and it will reopen the page I was working on. Some useful tip as well, you can always click on rename and rename your chat. If you're if you're expecting to reuse it in the future, it might worth giving it a, a name that makes sense for you. So I can say quadcopter marketing campaign. Okay, and then I'll be able to come back to this chat and come back to these pages and working with it again, and continue where I left. Another thing that is available to Copilot Chat is the capability of using agents. So here I have one simple agent called Employee Self-Service. It's been deployed by my IT admin. So it's been created by the IT admin and, and been deployed br broadly to the organization. Now I can ask question about my organization HR policies. So if I want to ask a question like the wellness benefit, I would like to buy a bicycle for my recreational purposes, is discover, I can ask the question and basically the agent will look for some specific data sources. In that case, I, I provided some sources that were hosted in SharePoint. It was a Word document with all the wellness benefit uh, detail about the organization and the agent's been able to pull information from this document in order to craft the answer. So remember, at the beginning, I told you that Copilot was leveraging web information to craft an answer. In the case of an agent, it'll be able to leverage information that come from another place. In that case, it will be, it's a Word document hosted on SharePoint, but you can as well connect on third party and third-party system like Salesforce, ServiceNow, there's actually 1,400 connectors available out there to create your agent. I won't talk more about agent today. I wanted you to know that it's available because I'm planning to do a video specifically on creating agent. Now, if I summarize all what's available in the free version versus the paid version, let me open this page here and look at this side-by-side uh, -side comparison. So basically, if you look at the top here, as I mentioned, you will have access to web grounded information, not the work grounded information. More grounded is only with the paid version. You have access to Copilot page, file upload in both, but limited to one file in the free version. You'll be able to do content interpreter, image generation. You'll be able to use agent and you won't have access to the personal assistant part of it, which means you won't see Copilot grounded on in your productivity application. So you won't be able to use Copilot inside of uh, Outlook to ask to summarize an email. You'll be, you won't be able to ask it to create a PowerPoint document. You won't be able to ask it to create new columns in an Excel spreadsheet. All example of what can be done using Copilot embedded in your productivity application. You also have more security control when you're using the paid version. Again, I won't talk a lot about it today, but basically with the paid version, you have access to SharePoint Advanced Visit Management. You have access to Viva Insight for more powerful analytics, and you have a bunch of pre-built report that came out of the box with the paid version. But in a nutshell, that's the difference between both versions. It was really a quick look at Microsoft 365 Copilot chat. I hope it answers most of your questions. If you have any questions, obviously you can drop them in the chat. If this was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want more AI tips and demos, please make sure to subscribe. Again, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll have to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.